Hi everyone and welcome to our Learn to Knit a Scarf video tutorial. We're going to learn to knit a scarf start to finish even if you've never knit before. So let's get started. Today we're going to be using Lion Brand Yarn Color Made Easy. Now this is one of my favorite yarns. You can get it in store and online. At lionbrand.com they actually made this into a convenient kit for us, which comes with two balls of yarn. That's all you're going to need for this scarf. And it also comes with your knitting needles. Now I have chosen to use circular knitting needles. These are my favorite because they're a little bit more versatile. You can use them for working projects flat and in the round. We're not going to learn all about that today, but they're just more versatile and a better investment. You can use straight needles as well if you already have them. You're also going to need to make sure that they are US size 13 9 millimeter knitting needles. When you look at needles in the store and online, you're going to see that they have lots of numbers and letters all over them. Just make sure that you get 9 millimeter needles. I do like the bamboo tips or any kind of wooden tipped needle. The wood is going to have a texture to it that makes it a little more grippy and it's going to make it a little harder to lose your stitches. If you use metal needles, especially at first, they tend to be a little more slippery and I find it more difficult when you're first learning. So your yarn and your needles, you're also going to need some scissors and a yarn needle. This is going to be different than an embroidery needle. They're much larger. You'll find them in the yarn aisle of your craft store and they're going to be easier to thread your nice bulky yarn onto. Now I love Color Made Easy because it is a very bulky yarn. That means that the strand of yarn is actually thicker. That means that your stitches are larger and they're easier to see. So I love learning with a yarn like this. So let's go ahead and learn to knit. So going ahead and getting started, we're going to reach into the center of our ball of Color Made Easy and pull out the center of the yarn. We're going to find the end here. And you just kind of pull on the strand until you find the end. There's really no better way to explain this. But you'll find the end eventually from the center pull. And once you have, leave a bit of a tail. And then we're going to create a slip knot. So we're going to do that by creating a loop. So just loop it around, move the tail behind the loop, so just put it behind, reach through the loop, and we're going to grab the tail, don't pull it all the way through, just pull it through a little bit, hold on to those two strands hanging down, and then pull on the loop to tighten the knot. Now this is an adjustable slip knot. So we're going to go ahead and grab our needles. We're going to forget about this tail here and we're just going to work with the working yarn which is the yarn attached to the ball of yarn. So go ahead and grab your needle, insert it into the loop, and then slide that knot to tighten down the loop onto the needle. So go ahead and slide just like that. We want this to still be movable on the needle, not too too tight, don't like yank it. Um, but tighten it down well enough so that it's good and on there. So now we're only going to be working with the working yarn that's attached to our ball of yarn and we're going to cast on. So that's just a fancy term for getting a bunch of loops on our needle that we can work stitches into. Now I'm going to show you the most basic level of cast on. So we're going to hold the working yarn with our the bottom of our hand and create an L shape with our index and thumb. Wrap the yarn around your index by moving down and around. So I'll do that again. Grab with your bottom three fingers, create an L. Wrap down and around, around your index finger, and then we're going to insert the tip of our needle into the loop. Slide it along your index finger and then remove your finger. Pull on that working yarn to tighten the stitch down. You've now cast on a stitch. Again, don't yank it. It should still be movable. It's not going to come off the needle. So don't go too tight here because we're going to need to work into those stitches later. Now let's do that again. Grab the working yarn with the bottom three fingers. Create an L. Wrap around. Insert the tip of your needle. Slide it along your index finger. And then remove your finger. Pull the strand to tighten down. That's all there is to it, to casting on. Grab the yarn, make an L, wrap around, insert, slide, and remove. 
Keep going with this until you have cast on 23 stitches. So that means that you should have 23 loops on your needle. At this point we have four, the original slip knot, and then we've cast on three. You should have what looks like kind of a braid on the bottom side. That's gonna be the very edge of the work. So just go ahead and keep going with this. The more you do it, the faster you'll get, as with all knitting. So the very beginning of your knitting journey is gonna feel a little bumpy. It's going to be a little awkward if you've never held yarn in your hands before. Um, but I promise the more you practice, the more you'll get the hang of it. So even if you're not quick or things feel really awkward, just remember that your hands have to learn how to knit. Even if you're watching this video and your brain is understanding it, the muscle memory has to come from practice. So don't be too hard on yourself. Make sure your shoulders are down, your hands are relaxed, and you're having fun with this. It's a meditative, relaxing activity as long as you don't bring too much stress to the table. So go ahead and cast on all 23 stitches. This is going to be the width of our scarf and it should be about 8 inches wide, give or take. Um, if you want a wider scarf or a thinner scarf, this is when you're going to want to adjust that. Um, but I find 8 inches wide to be the perfect uh, length for a nice infinity loop scarf. Okay, so we have all of our stitches cast on. We're going to orient this needle, the one with all the stitches on it, in our left hand. We want to make sure that that braid, the kind of like notchy, knotty looking thing, is on the inside or, you know, just kind of like in the middle of our uh, knitting here. So nothing's twisted around. We're not going to be working in the round though. Again, we're going to be working just back and forth, so it's not a big deal if it's twisted. But basically, we just want to make sure that everything is nice and straight and there's no funny business happening. So now we're going to start knitting. We should have an empty needle in our right hand. And to knit, we're just going to be passing stitches from the left needle onto the right needle, one at a time, and then we're going to switch back and forth. I'll show you what I mean, but basically it's just a matter of passing stitches from one needle to the next and doing a little bit of movement in between. So we're going to go ahead and grab our working yarn to work our first stitch. I like to grab it with my bottom three fingers and then kind of move my index finger down and through. So that yarn should be looped around the back of my index finger. That's how I like to hold it, but do it however is comfortable for you. So the very first stitch of our row, we're just going to slip the stitch. So that means we're going to insert our uh, empty needle in your right hand into the stitch. So use the pointy part of your needle to insert it through the very front of that uh, loop, just like so. Your working yarn should be wrapping down and around the back of your needle. Now we're just going to slip that off, and that's called slipping a stitch. We're not doing anything interesting or different. We're just inserting that needle and passing it to the other. Now we're going to knit a stitch. So insert the empty needle in your right hand into the stitch the same way we did before. Now wrap that working yarn around the needle from front to back. Now we're going to hold on to that stitch and pass from back to front and slip it off the left needle. That is knitting a stitch. You're knitting! Can you believe it? Okay, do it again. Insert your needle from the front to the back, working through the loop. Yarn over, wrapping from front to back again. Hold on to that loop on your needle. Pass it from back to front. And then slip it off. If you need to pause and rewind or start over, there is no shame in that. We all started somewhere, and it can be a little bit confusing to get the hang of, but really this visual is the best way for me to teach you how to knit. So reorient yourself, get your yarn comfortable in your left hand, hold on to that left needle with all the stitches, insert your right needle front to back. It should be kind of almost like you're going through the center of the loop on the left needle. That's how you should think of it. Yarn over and pull it through and then off. So insert, wrap around, pass through, slip off. Insert, wrap around, hold on, pass through, slip off. 
That's all there is to a knit stitch. Insert, yarn over, pass through, slip off. And just keep going like this for all the stitches on your needles. If you don't have even tension, and by that I mean some stitches are tight, some stitches are loose, don't worry about it right now. You're just getting the hang of things. You can have a caveman grip and you can uh, really manhandle this yarn. Just try to get the general movements of what I'm doing in the yarn that's in your hands. Insert your needle through the center of the stitch. Yarn over, pass through, slip off. Insert, yarn over, pass through, and slip off. And you're going to need to slide your stitches around on your needles, as you can see that I'm doing. As I work along, those loops on my needle are going to get further and further down, so you have to kind of scooch them up toward the tips of the needles, but try not to let them fall off the tips of the needles. This is why bamboo needles are great, because you are working with loops pretty close to the tip, and they might slip off, and that can cause some problems. So just go ahead and keep going here. Insert your needle, yarn over, pass through, slip off. Just keep saying that to yourself as you work every stitch, and I promise the muscle memory will kick in uh, probably a few rows into this, and then you'll be knitting without even thinking about what you're doing. It's kind of magical how your hands can really learn what your brain is trying to tell them if you practice enough. So keep going here. Again, you're going to need to reorient your stitches and just kind of like scooch things around to fit nicely um, and be up toward the tips of those needles. Insert, yarn over, pass through, slip off. If your stitches are feeling really, really tight and they're hard to scooch around, I do have um, a bit of a helpful tip for that coming up in just a little while in this video. So stay tuned if that's a problem that you're experiencing because most new knitters, I know I was this way, my stitches were super, super tight in the beginning. Um, and I bet I know what you're doing that's making them super tight and I'm going to help you fix it. Okay, so now we have worked all of our stitches. We have an empty needle in our left hand, so now we need to flip things around. We have all of our stitches here on this needle that was in our right hand. We're going to make sure that that slip knot is nice and tight by pulling on that tail from the very beginning. And now we're going to move this where we are holding this uh, needle with all of the yarn on it, our working needle, into our left hand. And again, we want all of that kind of braided bit, all of the knitted looking area, um, kind of facing inward or facing toward uh, the center of our hands. Make sure that your working yarn is going down and around the back side of the needle. It's not hanging out on top. So down and around the back. Make sure everything is lying nice and straight. It's not all twisted up. And now we're ready to knit the next row. So we're going to do exactly the same thing that we did on our first row. Empty needle in our right hand. We're going to slip the first stitch. Insert your needle and then just slip it off. Pass it from one needle to the other with no yarn over. Now work the next stitch as a knit stitch. Insert, yarn over, pass through, and slip off. You've knit the first stitch, you did a slip stitch first, then a knit stitch, and now we're going to knit the rest of the stitches on the needle. In knitting there are two kinds of stitches, there are knits and there are purls. In this pattern we're only going to work knitting stitches. We're not going to work any purl stitches, it's a little more complicated and honestly I love the way that all knit stitches look in a scarf. It creates a nice thick fabric and that winds up being called the garter stitch. Different stitch patterns have different names like stockinette stitch or seed stitch. All that is is different combinations of knits and purls. We're going to do all knits with uh, slipping the first stitch of each row in this pattern, and that is going to produce a nice garter stitch. So go ahead and keep knitting every stitch in your row, just like so. And you'll see that I am scooching those uh, loops on my needles around as needed to make sure that everything is nice and oriented toward the tips of my needles. It's going to take some time for you to get quick at this, so don't worry if 
uh, you're moving really slowly or if you feel like it's still really awkward in your hands, I promise it'll come with time. Just give yourself a little space, a little grace um, while you learn to knit. So this is how things should be looking. You should be seeing a bit of a kind of wiggly, knitty looking thing coming off of your needles here. Knitting is a very slow art, so don't expect to have your scarf done in a day. Um, it takes a lot of time to work up these itty bitty stitches, even with a thicker yarn like this. So just have patience and enjoy the process. As we move on to our next row, we're just gonna keep doing the same thing. Yarn needle in our left hand, or the needle with all the yarn on it. Make sure your working yarn is going down and around the back. Hold your working yarn in your left hand and then hold your empty needle in your right hand. When we're working with circular needles, I also want to mention that you will have loops hanging out on the cords back here. That's totally fine. It's not going to change anything with your tension or how your stitches are going to look. Um, the cords are just there to hold more stitches basically. So we're going to go ahead and get going. Every row will begin with just slipping that very first stitch, passing it from the left needle to the right needle. And then we're going to start knitting as we do with every row. We're just going to keep going with this forever and ever until our scarf is six feet long, if you can believe it. So I'm going to zoom in here. This is the part where I'm showing you what not to do. I see a lot of knitters do this. They insert their needle, they yarn over, they pull through, and then they yank on it. And if it's looking really tight here on the right side, I bet you yanked on it. Did you yank on it? Did I catch you? Make sure that you insert your needle, you yarn over, you pass through, you slip off, and then you don't yank. I promise that your stitches are not going to somehow fall off the needle. They might slip off if they're too close to the tip, but yanking on them is not going to do anything but create a headache for you. So make sure that you're not yanking anything. Make sure you're just holding that yarn uh, loosely in your left hand. You should be wrapping the yarn where it's distinctively yarned over your needle, but you shouldn't be yanking and pulling and tugging aggressively. If you find yourself doing that to keep your stitches on your needles, you might need to scoot your stitches down from the tips just a little more. Don't yank so tight. Okay, so just keep going, knitting and knitting and knitting, always passing that very first stitch as a slip stitch of the row. What that's going to do is create a nice, uh, clean edge on your garter stitch. So as you work along, it should start looking something like this. Here's my finished scarf. And I just want to show you that what you're working on, although it might not look much like the finished scarf at this point, you can see the very beginnings of that garter stitch. And that garter stitch is going to look like all those little wiggles. So you can see kind of like the wiggly lines of the garter stitch once it's knit up row after row after row. And if what's on your needles is looking like what's on my needle right now, it might be a little discouraging. It doesn't look like anything amazing yet, right? But that's okay because you're just going to keep going and going and eventually it's going to turn into this scarf that's in front of me, believe it or not. I know that it looks a little underwhelming right now, but just keep going in the same way we have been. Slip that first stitch and knit everything beyond. If you need to stop and rewind this video to the beginning, if you need to start over and just give yourself a little space, there is absolutely no shame in that. Take your time, enjoy your knitting, and just keep going until you have finished 70 inches or 150 rows. So each of those little wiggly looking lines is going to be one or two rows, depending on how you're looking at it. If you're looking at a thick wiggly line, that's two rows. Or you can count as you go along and take note. Um, or you can just measure in inches, which is what I like to do because sometimes it's a little difficult to count 150 rows without losing count. Okay, so just keep going and going until you've reached 70 inches. About six feet is a perfect double loop infinity scarf. I'm going to show you how to seam it up here in just a minute. Um, but I like that length of scarf, eight inches wide by 70 inches long. It's just really nice and squishy and warm. So just keep going with this, keep knitting, throw on a nice show on Netflix or an audiobook, and just enjoy the process. It's slow, but it is so great for the mind to calm down 
It's so great for the hands to do something productive and you can feel proud of yourself that you created something out of a ball of yarn and a couple of things that look like chopsticks. It's kind of amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna show you also how to join a new ball of yarn real quick. So you're gonna need two skeins of yarn for this pattern and that means that eventually your first skein's gonna run out and you're gonna need to join the second. So I've kind of imitated this by knitting up a little bit and you can see that that wiggly stitch is starting to take shape. And I've snipped my yarn as if I had run out of my first ball. So oh no, my first ball's run out and I only have this little bit left, what do I do? There are lots of fancy joining methods and you can look up all kinds of different ones on YouTube, but I like to just simply knot them together. This is a little controversial and I'm putting myself out on a limb by even recommending it to you, but honestly, it works great. So match up the end of your old ball of yarn and the end of your new ball of yarn and just tie a knot. You don't have to make it complicated. You don't have to do any fancy technique tie it in a knot. Make sure your knot is secure and then just go ahead and feed that yarn into your left hand and continue knitting even if you're in the middle of a row, even if you're in the middle of a stitch. Just go ahead and keep knitting as if that knot and those tails aren't there. See what I did? I just knit that stitch and there's a knot and some tails behind it but it works out great. And there you go. Now you're cooking on the new skein and you're just knitting along and everything is easy and you don't have a fancy join that you have to figure out. I love just tying a knot. I know it's not going to come undone. I can weave those ends later and it's just simple. So that's how I like to do it, even if it's a little elementary. So here we have 70 inches of scarf. I have knit and knit and knit and now things are looking wiggly, they're looking stretchy, and I am so happy with how this scarf is turning out. I can't wait to cast it off, which is a fancy way of saying finish it off, and sew it up so that I can wear it. Okay, so we have some yarn on the needle. You can see where I joined my new yarn there, my second ball. I've finished a row. I'm at about 70 inches at this point, so I'm ready to cast off and finish this thing, but I still have all of these loops on my needle. So I'm knitting along happy as a clam, but now I'm ready to finish and I have all these loops here. Um, I also want to point out that this scarf is looking really straight. That's because I made sure not to add any extra loops on the needle as I was knitting. I took care to make sure that every single row only had 23 stitches. Um, as you knit along, you should still have 23 no matter how long your scarf gets. So now I need to cast it off and I need to get all of these loops off of my needle. So I'm going to show you how to do that. It's really, really simple. It's basically what we've been doing with one minor change. So we're going to go ahead and slip the first stitch as we've been doing. All of our uh, stitches are here on the left side and my empty needles in my right hand. I'm going to slip the first stitch as I have with every other row of this scarf. So insert your needle and pass it over. I'm going to knit the next stitch as I have been. And now I'm going to stop. I have two loops on my right needle, two stitches. And at this point, I'm going to cast off a stitch. So kind of pause here, don't knit anymore. And I'm going to take the first loop, my slipped stitch, and pass it up and over the second stitch. So use your left needle to insert and then pull it up and over. This is almost kind of like creating a knot and getting rid of that first stitch. So now you can see I only have one stitch on my right needle. Now you need to do that again, but to get two loops on my right needle, I need to knit the next stitch off of my left needle. So knit another one, and then before moving on, pause and finish off that stitch. So again, using my left needle, go into the right hand stitch or the first stitch on my right needle and pass it over. You're really just kind of loosening that first stitch and bringing it up and around to pass it off. Knit the next stitch so that we have two loops on our needle. Insert with your left needle and bring it up and over. That's called casting off. 
we're going to cast off all of the stitches. So that means that we're going to knit one and then cast off another one. So just keep going here. You should notice that you start to see the edge of the work kind of happening as you continue casting off. So just keep going here. And we can see that the edge is becoming pretty distinct and we're now we're at the end of the row. So once we get to the very end, we're gonna knit that last stitch on our left needle. So now our left needle is empty. Go ahead and pass over, cast off that last stitch, and you should have one loop left on your right needle, one stitch. Your left needle is empty. And now we can see what that edge looks like now that it's all cast off. It should look nice and clean and pretty. Oh, it's so satisfying, isn't it? Now we're going to take our scissors. We're going to leave a long tail so that we can sew this up into an infinity scarf. Snip the end while that loop is still on the needle. Now we're going to just pull this through basically. So loosen up the loop that's on the needle. Loosen up that stitch a bit. Remove your needle. Reach through that loop. And then you're going to pull the tail all the way through. So reaching through that loop, pull the tail out and through, and then tighten that down by pulling on the tail. That is just going to finish things off and keep everything nice and secure. And we're going to weave this end or sew it together into an infinity scarf anyway. So don't worry about that very, very last stitch not being quite as neat as all of the other ones. At this point, we're done with our needles, so we can set those aside. And now we're ready to sew this up into an infinity scarf. First, I'm gonna show you how to weave an end so that we can go ahead and take care of one of these ends, either here at the end of our last row or at the uh, beginning of our cast on, at the very beginning of our project. We should basically have one end uh, that needs to be woven at each end of the scarf. Whichever one is longer is what you wanna leave to sew up your scarf, so go ahead and weave the end of the shorter one. I'm gonna show you how to do this one here. So go ahead and use your yarn needle that we talked about in the very beginning of this video. Thread it on there. And we're just going to weave this end in. Now, I like to do this in a really simple method, kind of following the wiggles of the garter stitch. So go down and through the center of a stitch, down a couple of rows, to kind of get down into the body of the work. I like to weave my ends kind of down a bit, an inch or two from the very top, so that it's nice and secure. Pull it down so that it's tight, but not too tight. Now you see how this wiggle kind of makes a downward motion? We're gonna follow that by working up and through the next uh, top wiggle, we'll call it. Now we're gonna work vertically for a couple of rows, and then we're gonna come back down and basically do the same thing a couple of times. You wanna try to work in different directions, different heights, and kind of go back and forth a little bit to really secure that end in place. Just try to hide it as best you can, but remember that this end is going to be woven quite close to the seam of our work, which probably means that it's going to be fairly well hidden from anyone that doesn't knit. Go ahead and snip your yarn pretty close to your scarf so that that end is buried and hidden. You're going to want to do the same thing here with these ends from your join to your second ball of yarn. But we can do that later. For now, I'm going to show you how to sew up the two ends of your scarf to form an infinity scarf. So you're going to take this other end from your cast on, and you're going to thread it onto your yarn needle. Now you want to bring these two ends of the scarf together. They should be the same width because you should have the same number of stitches at your cast on as your cast off. And that should be 23 stitches in each row for the entirety of the scarf. So basically we're going to thread our needle and then we're going to match up these two ends. Make sure that your scarf isn't twisted at all. Make sure everything is lying nice and flat. And we're basically just going to sew right along the cast on and the cast off edge. They should look almost the same. You should see what look like little V's at the top and the bottom of this scarf. And we're just going to sew right on through the V shape. As you can see, I'm just inserting my needle through what look like both legs of the V. 
and I'm just gonna keep going back and forth. I like to use a mattress stitch, which is kind of like sewing in a shoelace pattern. It's kind of like threading a shoelace. So you're just gonna go back and forth, always working from the center. And what I mean by the center is the space between the two panels, always working from the inside out. And make sure that you don't skip any stitches here because you want to make sure that you are matching everything up nicely so that you're not getting any like wonky puckering or any weird ruffling because you're not matching your stitches up. So just make sure to take care and go slow. This is the very, very last step. You're so close to having your scarf done. I know that it's easy to want to rush it, but just go ahead and sew slowly. Make sure that you finish this off with care and attention to detail. It's gonna be so worth it. And once you get to the end here, we're going to keep sewing all the way through those last stitches. And I like to reinforce the edge by sewing an extra stitch or two, just to make sure that everything's really strong, just because the seam is going to be the major stress point of the piece. So just make sure to sew really securely. And then we're gonna weave this end just as we wove our other end. And you can see here what the seam should look like, but to someone that doesn't knit, it's probably not even noticeable. So go ahead and weave that end and then snip it. And now your scarf is completely done. Can you believe that you knit an entire project? Look at how good this looks. It's so squishy. I'm so glad that you stuck with it and you have a finished scarf. Pat yourself on the back and get excited to knit some more because I'm sure now you're addicted. And look, now we've finished our scarf and it's ready to wear. You can wear it long like this, or you can even loop it around twice and that's just gonna create a really warm, cushy scarf. I love making this scarf pattern and wearing it. Um, it's a great pattern to make even as you get to be a more advanced knitter. It's just a fun, basic staple to come back to. If you wanna to learn to crochet a scarf similar to this one, I did make a beginner crochet tutorial using this exact same yarn, and you can check that out right here. Also make sure to check out my website, www.sorella.com, for more free crochet and knitting tutorials. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you love your scarf. See you later.